What's poppin' players? Welcome back to a Two Penny Games review slash impressions this time of Armored Core 6, The Fires of Rubicon. I am your host, Tavin Bothell, here with my good friends and co-hosts. Say hello to the people, Connor Elliott. Hello again. After two minutes. After two minutes. Relatively. <laughs> if you're listening to the Gamescast, Monday, 8 a.m. Uh, and say hello, Phil Shoemaker. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> We've all been playing Armored Core 6. We are, as yeah. of right now, all about the same part, which we've all completed Chapter 1. Connor, I believe, has done one extra mission, Phil. I don't know. I just know that he's completed Chapter 1. So uh, That's correct. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Where he, Me and Phil, exact same page. Um, and so, gentlemen, we didn't really talk about it, uh, but I don't see the need to really do our full hullabaloo review. Everybody talk or... or special segments or something i think we can just kind of talk about the game uh i'll go like kind of first and just kind of lead off hey i really like this game this game is pretty fun um i wasn't sure how much i was going to like it until i started getting deeper and deeper into it um but the deeper i go the more and more i appreciate it and the more and more i like it um it's very much just your classic mech building fantasy game where uh the focus is uh, you know, building out your mech and building out loadouts and so forth and customizing it and uh, really just having the coolest mech that you can possibly have. And pretty much everything about the game is in service to that, whether it's the story and the narrative or just sort of the overall general gameplay design and so forth. Uh, this is from... Uh, from software, of course, you know, from such games as Elden Ring and Dark Souls and Bloodborne and all that. Um... This team specifically is the one that worked on Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, which is my personal favorite FromSoft game um, that I've played. And uh, it shows here with the fast-moving player characters and the fast combat and uh, sort of a more focus on quick, I would say, quick reflexes and, and some positioning and so forth. But uh, uh, I'm very much uh, enjoying it, and I think it's a just a lot of fun, man. And uh, uh, the, the more you put in, the more it's there. And, you know... Um, I think this is one of the more accessible from software games. Like you don't have to be a super crazy good gamer uh, outside of a couple of checkpoints where they really do. They really do say, all right, we're going to turn it up. It's still a from soft game. So there's still definitely some moments of difficulty, but overall, I think this is one of their more accessible titles just in the fact that it's not constantly beating you over the head. It's just occasionally beating you over the head. Connor, yeah, you wanna, where are you at? Oh, uh, well, as I said, Chapter one, I finished chapter one, episode, chapter two, episode one, I guess you could call it. Uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoy this game as well. It's my first foray into the Armored Core series, very much a, a, a well-respected series back in the day. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, the first one in a while. So from what I understand, yeah, you are right, Tavin, it is very much about positioning. It's about builds, you know, modifying them to suit your needs, because when you're going out to the missions, you can change your, your mech whenever you die your weapons, your armor, whatever. And particularly with the bosses, only with the bosses, you need to do that. Because some some builds are just better at taking down some uh, uh, you know, bosses than others. Like, for example, one of the, some of the varieties you can do is your more balanced mech, which is the one that I'm going for. You know, maybe you can, maybe you dual wield, you know, ranged weapons. Maybe you have dual melee weapons, which is kind of crazy. I get myself go for a, a melee weapon, a sword in this case still, and have my gun, a trusty gun, an old firearm, and but I'm not, you know, I'm not in some of the other builds where I'm very lightweight and move extremely quickly, but I'm a little bit more, you know, prone to damage. Uh, but that is an option that the game offers you. Uh, the more tank-like, uh, tread-based mech, I guess you could call it. I don't know what the exact builds are called, which allow you just to take a lot of hits and completely devastate your opponent with, you know, really, really heavy firepower, the one that has the spider legs that you can use to float a lot and, you know, just kind of take a more aerial approach to the game. There's a lot of different ways you can play it, and it does incentivize you to try these new ones out because you have to buy parts, but you can also sell parts, and you sell them for, like, the original price they were at, maybe at a reduced amount, slightly, mm -hmm. but enough to where it, it, it tries to get you to say, okay, try this out, and then try this out, and do this and do that, which, unfortunately, you can't do on missions themselves, so you have to take advantage of the arena, to, uh, to train your mechs and know what exactly is uh, suited to your play style, but you can it also really just does replay old missions. You can. You can. Oh yes, you, for, you can. And that, that's where I'm getting a lot of my money when I'm when I feel the need to yeah. buy. You just get, you just so get forth, diminished, diminished money. Yeah, but it, it's only a one-time 
a diminishment. It's the like every playthrough after that, it's the same. So if it was like they would give you like five hundred thousand for beating it the first time, <clears> and then three hundred thousand every time after that. Yeah, it's it's already clear that it has a lot of replayability, mm-hmm. which I think previous Armored Core has that uh has that uh as well being a part of its game. Uh, but seeing as how this is the first one that I'm into, the only thing that I've heard is different in this game is kind of those Sekiro uh, inspirations of having a, a like a stagger meter that is affected, that can be affecting you or your opponent. So it's actually a very uh, reasonable tactic, especially with certain bosses like the first one after Chapter 1 in Chapter 2, which uh, it's good to get that stagger bar up so you can do massive amounts of damage and open them to up to basically any attack that you desire to do. It's extremely fun, fast-paced. I'm really loving this game right now, and I'm looking forward to playing more. Phil, where are you at, buddy? Um, I am also in the same boat as you guys. I've uh, completed Chapter 1 literally while y'all were doing the podcast. Very um, nice. I, I defeated, uh, I can't remember his name, but like the big boss, which a lot of people are saying is the hardest boss in the game. Um, so far. I, I've been he's reading, a, I, he's un, undeniably, he's like a top five difficulty, uh, maybe even top three or whatever. Uh, but I think the thing that makes him so hard is that he comes at you so early when you have so mm. little like different like builds that you can do. Yeah, as far as builds were going, I was uh, I was working with, uh, I had, I think it was a shotgun in my main hand, and then I had uh, a bazooka in the left, and then I would I had it, I unlocked the ability where you could have a primary weapon on your back, so I could swap it to a sword, and so I would uh, I would use the sword to like slice him up as I would I would break his armor and do extra damage. Um, and then I just had like a missile launcher on my, on my other shoulder. And that was how I ended up getting him. It, it, I think once I switched to that build, it took me four or five tries, something like that, but I ended up getting him. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm building mine based off of, uh, me being like a huge mech anime fan. I, uh, I based it off the Lancelot unit from Code Geass, which is super fucking cool. It's just cool, like gold and white, uh, like with some green accents and the weapons are like purpley and orange and super cool. One of the best animes of all time. Probably my favorite of all time. That's a good, I, that's a good choice. If I had to, uh, to think right now, for at least for the, pe- the past few years, it has been. Um, but I, I'm having a great time with this game. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, it's a, it's a From Software vehicle. Um, uh, also my first foray into the Armored Cord franchise. Um, very, very fun. Very fun movement. Very fun uh, kind of like fantasy fulfillment of like just running around in a mech, blowing shit up, fighting other mechs. Um, the voice acting in this game is really cool. I like, uh, I like a lot of the, the actors they got for it. They got Ray Chase as I think the Archibus guy. You got, um, Patrick Sates, who's your handler guy. Um, okay. fantastic, yeah. fantastic I'll, I'll say, voice cast that we have here. <laughs> Everything about the voice acting or just the dialogue or story in general, it's just like, Hey, what can we say? That's cool. And that's it. And it's like, I'm <laughs> right? not like, I'm not really paying attention to what's happening. It's just. All right, six, two, one. Now you gotta go and destroy this facility and infiltrate the dam. And I'm like, all right, that sounds cool. Let me go do that. Um, it's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm having a great time. I've been I've been toying around with different builds. I saw one online that was like a super fast like melee type build. I cannot work with it. It uses two different melee weapons. Like you swap between one on your shoulder and one on your main hand. Yeah, did not work for me. Um, I was trying that out in the arena. Maybe it would work better in like an actual mission. But as far as like this this particular other armored core unit I was fighting did not work out. I would just get melted. My, my would issue hop around. right now, my build what I'm what I'm working with right now, what I beat chapter one with. Is, well, for a long time I was using the um, the default assault rifle that they that they start you out with. Yeah. Um, but it it was carrying me all the way until that chapter one boss where I had to switch mm-hmm. to the SMG for a little more power. Uh, less ammo, which sucks, so I have to conserve my shots a little more. Um, but sure. yeah, that one's really, really working for me. In my left hand, I have the shotgun, the little one-shot shotgun that just does a bunch of da- dude. The stagger damage on that motherfucker is insane. Yeah, good stuff. Um, and then I'm I'm dual. It's different types of rockets, but it's it's uh, homing rockets on both shoulders for me. Yeah, one yeah. that goes straight up, and then one that is like just tracing and goes straight at you. Um, but uh, I'm I'm really just enjoying the feel of the game. I'm enjoying the experimentation of it i'm not into any of the charge weapons any weapon that charges i just feel like it messes up my flow and i can't Mm. i can't get uh i can't get the right damage or timing in for it and so i'm just like all right 
let me let me keep to the stuff that fires either one time or or I can just hold it down continuously or something like that. Um, just so that I can sort of balance like, all right, here's my little like chip damage with my SMG, uh, my main damage with the shotgun and then like the rockets I just shoot off whenever I can at the at the main enemy or whatever. Um, but I I can't get over how good this game feels to play mm -hmm. it. That's the thing with me is like. I was running around replaying missions, building up some money to to buy new parts for that chapter one boss, and I was having just as much fun. Like it's oh, like yeah. replaying it was not uh, um, like holding me back or giving me any less enjoyment at all. Like um, the it, it's very big, like Peace Walker sort of Phantom Pain vibes, um, where it's just like you know you're loading up your missions, you're going through, and you're going back, and you're you know. Uh, you know, messing with your build a little bit and so forth. And, um, I'm really, really enjoying all of that. Uh, I already, cause, uh, you know, you buy like more permanent upgrades, uh, in there by messing with, uh, what do they call it? The arena? Uh, Is it that? Yeah. It's, there's also like the something tuning where like you can kind of, yeah, it's called like OC tuning or something. Yeah. AC tuning or, or, or something like that. It's like OS tuning. Oh, it's OS. OS. OS tuning, yeah, where where you buy sort of like more permanent upgrades for um, your mech and so forth, uh, and this is where you get things like a quick turn or um, a kick that you could do right out of your dodge or whatever, or like how Phil uh, was talking about switching out your your shoulder weapons for main weapons, um, and sort of like that. Uh, you know, I started out and I was like, all right, let me get the movement based ones, and I was like, you know what, I'm really not using them. Like, I'm not using this kick. I'm not using the quick turn. Uh, let me reset that and get the things that I need, like, actually in this moment. So, like, I bought, like, the shield or something to kind of mm -hmm. give me, like, just a quick edge in the moment when I need it uh, and so forth. And I've, I've been kind of enjoying that. I love that, like, there's no wrong way to play the game, really. Yeah. Like, it, it, it really is like, hey, man, whatever... Uh, you know, you got to experiment and you got to try and, you know, you're, we're going to kick your teeth in if you fucking up. Um, so you have to come with the, with just like the, um, you gotta, you gotta come with the skills basically to, to pay the bills. Literally. I was actually just about to talk about how much I love that this game, uh, rewards experimentation Yeah. with how Connor mentioned it earlier. There's, there's no penalty for selling your stuff back. It's exactly how much you bought it for. Um, that's cool. It's, it, I didn't it's very, that. That what, that's what's super cool about it for me is like I'll try something out from the store and I'll be like, hey, I didn't like that. I'm not going to use it again. Sell it back, get my money, try something else. It's very, very neat. See, I'm always, you know, I'm always nervous of like selling things off. So I'm like kind of hoarding things. There was one uh, like hand cannon weapon uh, that I tried out for a little bit and I was like, eh, I'm not really feeling it. I'm just going to sell it back. And that, that yeah. was the only thing I've sold back so far. It's, it's nice to be able to do that, you know. One of the other, like, you mentioned it before, Tavin, how basically if what if you find a build that works for you, then go with it. If it's able to get you through the game, yeah. you know, obviously sometimes you need to adjust depending on the bosses you're fighting or whatnot, but it's kind of like fighting games in that result, in that regard. You, it doesn't matter really what the tiers of the characters are, as long as you know how to play that character, as long as you are familiar with it, you can become, a, you know, just a, a good AC pilot, which yeah. one of the other elements of this game that, I'm sorry if one of you guys mentioned it and I just repeating it again the mobility the mobility that you're offered in this game is some of the best i've had in you know gaming in recent years you're able to have really good elevation uh boosting upwards using a, a boost that can take you very far distances very fast that also factors into the combat allowing you to stagger people more easily yeah. the dodge is very nice the norm the, you usually walk like just with your big old clanky legs but there's no reason to do that dude i hate the quit. walk so much it pisses dude, me yes. off just start me off in boost mode please yeah. like why every time i every time i respawned in that in that chapter one fight yeah uh, at the end mm -hmm. it starts you in walk mode and it that's pisses me the exactly fuck off. what i was about to get into because it, it frustrated me to no end it should be like start me in boost mode and then Please. if I want to turn it off to see how the thing, because it's really just like seeing like it walk. You just want to see what the yeah, walking right? animation looks like. And you're like, all right, I've seen it. Now let's get the boosting back. Uh, it's just so annoying. Um, yeah, but I also like, like there, there's a like built in, they call it like an aim assist mode or something. It just kind of helps you focus on 
one enemy a little bit more if if, if you need oh, to. Oh, is that so clicking that, in the right stick? That's clicking in the right stick right there. That's gotcha. that's what I was doing to kind of keep because the chapter one boss is fast as fuck. He's really yeah. fast. Uh, so I would click in that right stick to kind of keep him in frame a little bit easier just to kind of keep the focus up. I like that the game doesn't like punish me or make me feel bad for doing that. The fact that it's just on a simple button press and I don't have to go into a menu to do it. Yeah. Um, it, it makes me like feel like, oh, okay, this is a mechanic of the game that they do want you to use. Um, I, there's a there's a upgrade for manual aiming later on down the tree or whatever, and I'm curious to see if that's like worth getting at all. I imagine it is, otherwise they wouldn't put it there. Um, hmm. So I'm I'm very interested to see what that's all about. Uh, but yeah, Connor, to your point about mobility and just how it feels to move around this world, yo, it's excellent. It feels so good. I don't know if I've played a game that feels this good since Sekiro. Um, I'm trying to think, and I just I'm struggling to come up with one. Uh, in the last couple of years, that feels this good to play. Oh, you know what? Neon White. Oh, Neon yes. White felt yeah. great. Yeah, it. but that, you know that similar, like on the same tier, uh, is is you know all of these games, and I just I love it, man. And, and to talk about like sort of like the world design real quick. I mean, it's a lot of grays and a lot of like one color palettes in whatever level you're in. You know, they'll switch it up, and it'll be a snow level or water uh raining or maybe like you're in a desert or whatever um mm. but you know it's all kind of like one color palette but like you just kind of believe the world you're in a hundred percent and all of the effects that are blasting off of your your ac are just to like make you feel cool like everything looks and feels so cool while watching it i'm watching the uh the b-roll footage right now excuse me that phil recorded for us this is his stuff and it's just cool, man. Like, it, it, his colors are a lot brighter than mine, and I'm like, it's kind of cool how his bright colors still kind of, like, play well in this environment uh, and so forth. Right? You know, a lot, baby. Yeah. Right now, I'm rocking, like, uh, sort of like an emerald green with a, uh, a gold trend to it uh, right now. Uh, but last night, I was playing, and I was like, you know what I should do? I should find, I should figure out how to make it look like Spider-Man is what I should do. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to, like, get a little deeper into, like, the uh, the different, like, mech designs to find something that'll work for me uh in that sense uh which is interesting you know we're talking about builds and so forth it's funny how like your build is mostly based around the weapons you like and the weapons you use um yeah. and then the actual armor pieces that you are put on are kind of just to um help you with play style and help you with uh, uh, equipping those weapons because everything has weight and everything uses energy and you can overheat weapons and so forth. So like your chest piece, your head piece, your arms and your legs are kind of meant to sort of balance all of that out. It's not so much about how they look. It's not so much about uh, benefits that they give. It's just sort of like, to me at least, uh, power balancing, making sure that I have enough energy to use these weapons, to make sure that I have uh, or enough energy to use these boosters or whatever that that you know prefer to use like I can I have the booster equipped where you can just kind of mash the square button uh, a mm -hmm. little bit and boost a whole bunch of times. Um, it's also just, it's also kind of like um, each one like obviously like the smaller like thinner ones are gonna have less armor so you're gonna have less health yeah and like the the bigger bulkier ones are gonna have a lot more armor so you have more health yeah so it, that's another like aspect to it and it, it, it it's so crazy to me where it's like i prefer lightweight faster characters and so forth but i find myself being forced to use the more middle range stuff um just to sort of like be able to balance it with all of the other things that i need for for the damage output that i want to do um it, it, it's it's really fascinating just like how in-depth these systems are and yet you want to play with them you don't feel mm -hmm. you know it's not like this this is a franchise that could easily be tossed to the side of like and eh, it's a little too nerdy i don't want to dig in my menus that much or whatever like i don't care about all of the little percentages and and numbers going up and stuff like that uh but this game specifically it's like yeah it is that but I want to play with it. I want to try out new things. I want to hop around and things. I'm reading weapon descriptions to like get like an in-depth view of what this thing is before I buy it and put it on. Like that's not something I do in video games. I'm having such a good time with this game though. It's yeah. it's legit. I I was excited for it. Um just because like it was a new met game and also like from software like within like with the past, I don't know, it feels like a decade. 
they've just been going crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, with like the quality of their games, and Connor's like smoking a snack right now. Whatever the fuck, it's some kind of like <laughs> veggie straw or something. It's a fry. A McDonald's a fry. fry. Gotcha. And uh, but yeah, it's it's extremely satisfying just moving around in the world, blowing shit up, and uh, destroying other ACs and other little what do they call them? MTs, like the little mini mechs or whatever. Yeah. I so um, very quickly get distracted by them, and I'm like, oh, let me blow you up. And I'm like, wait, I can't. Yeah. I need. I have an objective. I'm supposed to go yeah. do something. Let me get focused. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, this proves, guys, right? It's kind of definitive. That From Software is one of the best game developers out in the game right now. Oh, one they of. Showed one of, the, yes. One of, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, 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 for, I, for me, I've always thought that they were like, I don't know, top five. I think they're probably top three, at least for me. I mean, because they, they've proven that with Sekiro, okay, game's vastly different. Well, they've proven it with every time they've moved from the Dark Souls formula. Elden Ring does, but not as much. It really just adds jumping, mobility, mm -hmm. obviously the more open world aspects to it. But mm -hmm. overall, it plays very similar to other Dark Souls games. But Bloodborne plays very different. Well, plays different, but still, you know, has some similarities. Sekiro departs a little bit more from that. And Armored Core is a completely different type of game entirely. And yet they're still able to just make it extremely fun and you know it's, the it's, it's funny how this is good, still like good, this is a returning sorry to cut you off this is a no. uh, a returning to roots for for from software but it's also at the same time like branching out completely because they're not yeah. known for this like they they or this is not what what made them popular this is you know sort of what was keeping them in the niche category until they they popped out with the dark souls and so forth and started doing that so it, it, it's fascinating that that is anyways connor continue your point uh, yeah i was gonna i was gonna cap it off by saying that the Sekiro team is they know how to do good combat. Yeah. Because Sekiro has some of the best has like some of the best combat in the FromSoft, like the Soulsborne games. And Armored Core is as you guys like, I'm mean, talking about it this entire time. It gives you a wide breadth of ways to, to play the game and incentivizes you to do it because all the ways you can play it, all the different builds are extremely fun and entertaining. All this uh all this harping and in, in hemming and hawing we've had about this this game and, and how much fun it is, it's uh, it's a real shame to having decided to counterpick it. Oh yeah, man! I'm, yeah, that that hurt me real bad, real bad. Why? Now, granted, Why did you do that again? I did not believe it was coming this year. I did not believe From Software was going to back to back us because I don't know if they have they ever done that. Oh yeah, Dark yeah. Souls three and Bloodborne. Yeah, Bloodborne coming out first. Damn it! Fuck. Yeah, yep. 2015 and 2016. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. man, this Sekiro team is fucking me up, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what? all all for the to the sake of having having great games. You know, I will say. This game proves to me what I've always said about From Software. They do not tell great stories. Like, the, this story, it's fine. It's there. It's whatever. The only reason that, like, it's getting dinged in reviews uh, this time around, as opposed to other From Software games, is because they put it front and center. And, and it's like, yeah, when you put a From Software game story front and center... Uh, and you put it under its own spotlight. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't match up. Like it just doesn't because they don't, uh, they don't tell great stories. I will say that the storytelling of Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Elden Ring is vastly different from that of Armored Core. Now, I I don't really give into a lot of the criticisms of the story Armored Core Six because it does it, it makes it, like obviously it's very predictable with the way it does things, but it has interesting moments. Like when you go and you're like, oh, go kill this Armored Core, you know, this mech. Because it's going to be, you know, used by this company, and we don't want to do it. And the person who's piling it is just a student who's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove myself." And then oh you murder. Oh my god! And then, and then you, you murder. murder the fuck out of them. You destroy <laughs> them. Holy shit! And it's kind of it's just actually like, kind of sad. It is because it's just like, oh, he was just a, he was just a guy. Yo, you know, this he dude really thought he was a protagonist, man. He really. I think thought. it's, I think yeah, it's great that that. What's funny is that is that is like the setup for like a mech anime protagonist. It's is like they're is. just this. This uh, I, th I think of like Iron Blooded Orphans, something like that. Like that's what I think of. Yeah. Um, expert mech pilot. Meanwhile, yeah, exactly. meanwhile, the player character silent, no expression, yeah. nothing. Like totally it. silent, playing both sides of this. Of oh this yeah. War. Play, uh, I, is there is or there only sides. two sides? I was gonna say there's like three sides to this. Shit. No, there's there's the people who like are the security, the basically the government of Rubicon. There's yeah. the uh, people who are taking advantage of the gorilla. Run, like the and then you have all these the companies, yeah, 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 the rebellion, and then you have all these companies that have their own stake here that all have their own interests. Being, and then uh, there's another one that's introduced. Archibus and, and Balaam, there's right? Two. Yes, yes. Uh, Balaam, you know, there's so Archibus. many. I can't remember them. I only know those two. Yeah, yeah. Then there's also like a offshoot crazy group that basically do drugs 
um, and that are revealed in chapter two. Uh, that's what this game has, mis- has been missing. <laughs> Some drugs, drugs yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say the story has taken a small turn, I would say, at the end of chapter one that did make, like, make, make my ears go up and I, like, sat up and I was like, wait, what's happening here? Um, hmm. But almost immediately I was like, oh, okay, we're back to, we're back to this. All right, cool, whatever. Back to it. Um, so it's really, like, I mean, it's in no no shape bad. Like, it's not a bad, badly told story or anything. It's just kind of dry, boring. Um, you know, this is, uh, I think, that, like, this is almost immediately became a podcast game for me. Where I was like, all right, mm. throwing on throwing on a podcast, playing my video game. Yeah, sure, maybe I'll, like, cue in if the dialogue seems interesting. But for most of these missions, it's not. So I'm not really paying that much attention. Um, and then, like... Uh, only when like they decide to ramp the difficulty up in my like okay let me turn the pa- the podcast off i gotta focus uh mm-hmm. and get my get my uh get my battle strategy going um but yeah i know baby game i'm 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 very happy with this game i'm gonna keep playing it i don't know how much more i'm gonna keep playing it um this is this is a game that i do want to keep playing but you know this is a busy year and there are more games that already have more of an interest for me coming down the pipeline very soon namely starfield and baldish gate 3 on uh, on playstation so like as soon as those hit this game has zero chance of grabbing any of my attention but for right now this is a really fun game it's better than most of the games i've played this year and uh and i'm excited to play more same i'm i'm gonna get right pretty much right back to it as soon as we're, we're done podcasting for the day oh yeah once i get everything uploaded i i i want to i want to play some more for sure connor you're the from software fanboy here uh and you know this game seems very much up your alley where <laughs> how are you where are you like feeling uh about this game in the overall game of the year conversation um it's gonna be it's not game of the year uh, i i can say that with certainty but it's gonna be higher up there you know i think i don't <laughs> I'm not like you guys where I constantly plan out my game like list throughout the year and log everything that I've been playing. Probably should do that, but I don't. I always forget if I uh, ever have the inkling to do so. But th- off the top of my head, the game that it is most like challenging for whatever spot it's going to place in, just based off my the vibes I'm remembering from the past games I've played, is Jedi Survivor. It's, mm. it's kind of like between those two. They're both very similar in the level of quality. Uh, the thing is, Armored Core 6 is more refined. And so it really just depends on how the game progresses from here on out. This is but the, this right is the first game that's given me pause and made me think, oh, this might be the best combat of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. it, yeah, I just did. Survivor. Um, which is crazy because Survivor is just a FromSoft clone. You can't beat them at their own game. Too you legit to quit, man. True. Like, yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, for me, this is probably going to hit my list somewhere. Where? I don't know. Probably not top five for me. Um, but it, it's it's in there, and I'm, I'm really enjoying my time with it. Phil, how are you feeling? Um... My, we are still is, early. We're all sub 10 hours. In yeah. This, so, yeah, like, for sure. you know, it's hard um, to tell. I'm definitely going to put some more time into it. Uh, as far as my list goes, I could see this making it. I don't know at this point. Maybe it'll end up like number five. Yeah. I'm not sure. I could see it maybe going to four, but just my, my list right now is so pack, jam packed with this the the quality level of quality that we've had for games this year yeah um it's just insane me trying to think where i would put this on my list i just have to as soon as we get to like the point where we're setting out our definitive list i gotta like actually think back uh like the whole way through and and almost entirely redesign my list yeah i Um, mean there are five games coming out from september to november that or there's at least five games coming out that i'm fairly certain are gonna hit my list so my whole shit's yeah. going to look very different. As of right now, I don't even know if uh, Armored Core 6 is hitting my top five right now. It might. Mm. It's really competing with, like, Octopath Traveler 2 right now is, is where ah, it's at. Mm. Um, my, uh, my, my thing I'm dreading, which I think is, is something that's going to have to happen, is I have to kick off the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog off my list, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not happy about. Hurts the heart. Hurts the heart to see. Phil, would you believe it if I said Minecraft Legends is still on my fucking list? Get that shit out of there, dude. Uh, it will be. Our Armored Core 6 is kicking it off. But yeah, it's it, it's, uh, it's on there still. Did Hogwarts Legacy? No. Come up, it came out this year. No, it came, it came out this year, but it's not on my list. Yeah. But it's not on my list. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. 
Yeah. So Hogwarts got kicked off a while ago for me. So yeah, I, it was never on my my top ten. That, that that is one difference between me and Phil. Is Phil? R- correct me if I'm wrong, but you like save slots where you're like, ah, oh, I know Spider Man's gonna be in here somewhere, so I I save yes. like a top three. Yeah, I don't do that. I I, mm-hmm. I fill it out as I go, and then I I filter them out as as new ones come in. So there's that's currently why, only one open space in my list right now. Yeah, that's why like I have I have a full ten. I'm not proud of this ten right now because right now I have Minecraft Legends, and even though I'm enjoying it, Stray Gods, a role playing musical, Disney Illusion Island. Um, shit, man, Diablo Four might get kicked off my list, and I really enjoyed that game. So, you know, it, you know, my my list by the end of the year is going to be fifty percent different than it is uh, yeah. right now. Um, I'm I'm this whole all this year has made me super excited. Um, for when we do our recap of our top tens, yeah, uh, for the Two Penny Games Cast, I'm super excited to see what all of our lists looks like because I feel like. We're gonna. This is gonna be the most varied year that we've had. Ooh, I don't know, man. Because uh, my list was way like, and Connor's list is always fucking weird. Yeah, uh, yeah. Connor's always weird. got weird shit. Like it's, you know, he'll he'll pop out with some Warhammer game that I didn't even know came out, and I'll be like, what? When the fuck? Where was my review, Connor? <laughs> <laughs> did you have uh, uh, last year? You had two different Warhammer games on yours, didn't you? I don't I think Dark so. Tide. I, I think no? he said Dark Tide. Ah, uh, okay. No, I, I think he's had a Warhammer game every year, though. He's not like your your ass, Phil, where you had two Pokemons last year. Um, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's relax. <laughs> they I were different say, games. The uh, you know, we I very t- different Pokemon games because I had the the different lists last year uh, I- ahead of time. I was able to like tabulate points and so forth and sort of create a two penny games top ten of the year and so forth. This last year, like you knew what the top three were easy. Like it really wasn't that hard this year. That top three is going to, I don't, it's going to be hard to to guess that top three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Last year's top three being God of War, Ragnarok, Elden Ring and Neon White. Yeah. Yeah. And then like this year, like there's some like sure bets that you can probably guess on. You can, you can guess on Zelda. You can guess on maybe Jedi survivor. But then from there, it's like, I don't know, man. Starfield might be in there. Baldur's Gate might be in there. Spider-Man might yeah. be in there. Um, yeah. We've got... That's, that's my one open space that I'm saving for what I anticipate to be Spider-Man. But, mm-hmm. you know, with, with all the other games coming out this year, you got Mario Wonder, you God. got Baldur's Gate, you got uh, fucking Armored Core, which we're playing right now. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. And it's, I'm, it's we're crazy. still not sure where this is going to land. Because, no. again, the further and deeper I get in, the more and more I like it. Um and so, like, who knows? By the time I roll credits, I might immediately Uh-oh, be like, frozen. do it again. Is Connor mm-hmm. gone again? No, he's still here. All right. No, I'm here. Not yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for our Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon impressions. We're really high on it. Uh, it does not look like at any point we're going to become any lower on it. So we give it. We go ahead and give it a full recommend. <laughs> Phil? No? Oh, oh. Maybe oh. he's frozen? Maybe he's frozen. Maybe he's the one with the problems. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, let us know how you're feeling about Armor Core 6 on launch week alongside with us. And uh, let us know where it's landing in your Game of the Year conversation. Until next time, have a great time. And uh, I guess, Connor, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye. Bye, bye, bye Phil. Oh, bye there we Phil. go. Bye. Oh, there he oh, is. Back. Phil, say bye. I'm back. Bye.